Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Wednesday, January the 26th, the year's 2022. Let's talk trading, problem solving, part 11. This video is for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. We've been uh, discussing problem solving to begin the year, and if you think about it, if you're making money, do you have a problem? I mean, the knee-jerk answer would be no, you're making money, you don't have a problem. But perhaps there's something you're doing that you shouldn't be doing or something that you're not doing that you should be doing that might just take you to the next level, might just add a zero or two to your trading account, your portfolio. So that's just one thing to be aware of. You know, the whole idea is to win, and in trading, the win is to make more money. And a lot of times, you know, we talk about focusing on the process and the money will take care of itself. Well, that might be true to a certain point. You know, a lot of us probably have been in the situation where we get into a trade, we've been analyzing our charts. Let me see. Now just leave this chart up. We've been analyzing our charts. We get into the trade and the next thing you know, it does this on us. So for example here, this was a trigger and it went up just a little bit and then came slamming down. But does that mean you have to monkey with the trigger? Does that mean maybe there's something that you should have observed earlier and you missed it because a lot of times I tra I say trade what you see I've said that and I don't know how many times over the past decade right but the thing is are you seeing what's on the chart or are you just focused on this or, or are you looking left maybe your heads say 12 inches away from the monitor Maybe if you lean back in your chair, and maybe if you're two feet away from the monitor or three feet, maybe you might see something just a little bit differently. So, for example, where would be a good place to go long? Well, probably somewhere down here. Where would good be a good place to go short? Well, probably somewhere up here. And so, is this closer to the going short or going long? Um, I mean, that's kind of a simple question, but sometimes if you ask a simple question, you might get the simple answer that changes everything. Because so many times <clears throat> to fix our trading, we look outside ourselves. We look to the chart, we look to the indicators, we look to the system, you know, something goes wrong, we blame our luck, we blame the broker, you know, things of that nature, when that could pretty much be avoided. In fact, somebody was asking, um, just so you know, I posted the latest version of Indicator 2 and the Indicator 2 multimeter out on Crestlick today because somebody asked where they could find it. So I said, let me get you guys the uh, most recent version. So <clears throat> looking to solve problems, I mean, this would be, this right here is the perfect example of looking at the chart, maybe focused in on this one thing, forgetting everything that happened. So for example, um, this candle, pretty big candle here, M15. Okay, it pretty almost broke that high, but didn't. This one did, and then came right around. And you see, this one broke the box high, where price had been ranging here, or closing within this range, broke out. So what's the next thing? Price got, was in the, this box that already has been expired. But, you know, once again, looking to the left, it's like, hmm, should I really be taking this trade? It's just something to think about. 
And in fact, you know, we talk about putting horizontal lines on charts, or at least I do. But I mean, if you just look at a blank chart, I mean, what does this chart tell you? I mean, which direction would you trade based on this chart? Well, you can see it's a daily chart. But what if you go down to H4? Which direction would you trade? How about if you're on H1? Which direction would you pick to trade? How about M30? My uh, new favorite uh, chart is the M30. Uh, and the reason why is, is because the hour um, doesn't take into consideration that at the bottom of the hour, especially during this time, a lot of times there's news. And so news will change things. So you can see here, if you looked at the H1 bar, what had happened, but if you look at M30, if you were trading this, in fact, I, I did. I, I went long when this candle turned uh, bullish and popped out for, I don't know, a couple of points. <laughs> to be honest, I let about two pips uh, on the table. <clears throat> but as you can see here, we're right to the double low. So which way would you trade? I mean, based on M15, based on M5, or based on M1. So the question is, what can you do to solve whatever problem you may or may not be having when it comes to trading? Because trading is made up of different parts. We've talked about it. You know, your risk management, your money management, they kind of go together. Risk management being the downside, money management being the upside. You know, your brain management, all those psychological, emotional things you have to overcome that are unique to you. And then we talk about the systems, the charts, the methods, the indicators. But I would, I would venture that, you know, as a trader, you probably spend more time on the, the indicators and the charts than you do on the other two, the money management, risk management, and brain management combined. Meaning when you sit back and you analyze what happened, you know, to you during the course of the day, you probably look at the charts. You don't really look at well was my money management right was my risk management right because you know it's pretty simple but you just have to make sure that's right and that's probably the simplest leg of the three-legged trading stool that we've talked about to make solid you know your brain management that's probably the shakiest <laughs> you know and, and the systems the methods you know they're pretty simple you can sit here and watch price you know, would you have taken that trade? I mean, looking here, that's pretty much was the uh, highest or the lowest high. Right there, just take that trade. So, you know, I can see those things. Don't really need the indicators. But would I have taken that trade? Well, if you switch over to M5, um, you couldn't see that M1 lowest high. That's one of the reasons we have indicators. So. On this particular chart, we don't have the lowest tie, but here we do. And this chart is the M5 chart. But if we switch back to M1, you can see that trigger. And look how many times it triggered. And so you could have picked up one, two, you know, three pips on three trades if you were quick enough. And actually, this could have been a trade because there was a three ball there. And we got another three ball. That could have been a nice trade. So from this level, you know, if you look left, this is probably a good launching point. 
is it put in a, a lower low, came across the double low, and started moving up. So you can just wait and see what happens. Oh, looks like I need to plug my computer in. So you can sit here and watch this trade and see what happens from here. I mean, maybe it'll do a nice little fib retrace to here. It might even go halfway, which it probably will. It usually does. You can see here, price made up, made a new three ball in the high, hit the 50% level between this three ball and this three ball, came back down, put in a three ball, made a 50% level again, put in a new three ball, came back down, hit the 50% level. So it's things like that that you can target. I mean, it's not, you know, it's just the midpoint between three ball and the three ball it's not that difficult and does it always do it no not always but you can see it hit this fib level might be hard to see but looks like we're going to go to that 06 and if you look left you can see things got pushed down here before so you may have taken some pips off the table, or you may decide to ride it. Um, let's see. If we switch over to M1, you can see indicator 2 is telling you to stay in the trade. Question is, how many pips are you willing to give back? You look at how many you may have on the table. And you look at how many it's going to go back before it uh, gives you a signal. So it looks like we're going to hit that 06 level. And we just did. So indicator 2, if it you know closes below this level, but you'd be giving back three pips at the moment. So you just have to wait and decide. What does your money management tell you? You got pips on the table. Do you take them? now or do you wait and you can see here maybe if you switch over to m15 you can see it's still below the closes below the uh ma ema5 in this particular case on the m5 it crossed above so you know, where you get out, that's up to you. That's part of your money management, risk management. So you can see here, we hit this FIB level. So for your FIB guys, I think that's the 68 or 61. I never remember. I don't remember these off the top of my head anymore. But here you go. I mean, where do you get out? That's up to you. Some people would see that and punch out. Some people would have seen that and punched out on the way up. Some people would have punched out on the way down. What does your method or your strategy tell you to do? You're going to wait on the indicator and give back a bunch of pips? I mean, these decisions, these things, which you may or may not see as a problem, but they all do have, you know, ways of optimizing ways of making sure you walk away with a profit as opposed to a loss so how much did you want to give back so fellow traders that was kind of fun watching that develop um i hope it helps and once again if you have any problems you want me perhaps me and walmart to, to uh talk about let me know just put a comment in the video or on one of the forums where you know i hang out so when you're trading, always remember, never forget, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the Rumpled One, over and out.